What's up, please, the Ender here, back again with another streamer tips video. This is step number one <laughs> at being a streamer. Really, not an order, but I'd like to say this is step number one because you gotta pick a broadcasting software. And this video, I will talk to you about five steps in which you can pick your broadcasting software. There's plenty. So, I guess without further ado, let's get right into it. First, you gotta check which services are available for you to start streaming. I think uh, right now the main ones are kind of four only. You only have four options right now. I think there's more, but the ones I know about and I can safely talk, talk about them are XSplit, Twitch Studio, Streamlabs OBS, and OBS. And I also want to add OBS Live, which is basically OBS Studio, but with a twist. And we'll talk about that later. So XSplit, I don't really recommend XSplit. Uh, I've never used XSplit, but I think it has everything the others do. I've worked with the others uh, quite some time. Twitch Studio, I've just seen how it works, uh, but we will get to Twitch Studio after this. XSplit, uh, if you want the whole professional thing, you will just get, uh, you will have to pay for it. $25, I think for the premium version. So unless you think it's for you, Go ahead and buy XSplit, but anyway, uh, if that's not the case, just stick with the others. Twitch Studio, I don't think Twitch Studio, it's as uh, complete. I think it's a good software, of course, if um, it's okay for what you're doing, that's fine. But I think it's a very simple uh, software that you can get way more from Streamlabs or OBS. Now, to the two big ones, as I like to call them, Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. Well... Streamlabs OBS is the simplest one. I really recommend Streamlabs OBS if you're starting streaming because it has a simple one. You can actually modify overlays and it has a lot of pros to it. And also OBS Studio, it's a bit more, I like to think of it as if it were old school or a bit more professional, you know, because Streamlabs, it's a bit more friendly and OBS Studio is just more kind of your professional look of a broadcasting software, but they're both really good. Now, for step number two, you gotta do a couple things. You gotta think about what you really need. What are you gonna stream? Are you just gonna stream yourself talking to your chat? Are you not even gonna stream yourself? You're gonna leave a, a screen with your chat and you're just gonna talk to a microphone. Or are you gonna play games? Are you gonna uh, do interviews, even do a podcast? There's a lot of things that you can do on Twitch, but you gotta think on what you're doing. Arts and crafts also a good thing that I've been seeing, creating music. Um, painting everything well basically arts and crafts there's a lot of things that you can do on the twitch community you just gotta search what suits you i think the most common one which will be gameplays um or watching videos or reacting to something on your computer where you kind of need an overlay your your webcam maybe not your webcam also but a lot of things sources uh layers on your overlay i think for that you will need streamlabs or obs studio a lot of uh the other softwares can do that too if i'm not wrong but just trial and error. If you have one software, you don't like it, go ahead and get the new one. It really doesn't take a lot to transition. Personally, I transitioned from Streamlabs OBS all the way into OBS in about a weekend because I had to figure a lot of things out. Imagine if you only had, you're overlaying each one of those, uh, just assuming you don't have your alerts or some things based on a specific software. It really doesn't take that much time to transition. So take that into consideration and remember it is your choice. Step number three, why do I recommend Streamlabs OBS and also OBS Studio? Well, Streamlabs OBS, it's the thing I started with. If you really are just starting, you don't know anything about software, you want to become a streamer in a simple way, go Streamlabs OBS. I think one of the best people at explaining things are there at Streamlabs OBS, just ready for you to click on their videos and 
ready for you to open your mind to whatever they have to tell you about it. It's awesome. Um, I recommend a lot Gael Level. You will see his channel here uh, on a card. I think I will put. So yeah, Gael Level's a great uh, streamer slash YouTuber slash doctor. Any everything he does a great. He does great content. He even creates free overlays. And the best part about Streamlabs OBS is that it has this built thing, built-in thing where you can actually change the hue of your overlay so you don't need any image editing software you can just change if it's a if you buy a simple yellow overlay well that yellow overlay can be converted into green red purple anything you want your stream to look like i think it's more customizable on streamlabs obs if you want to know more about gal level he even has free overlays so yeah check him out on the card i left that up there also, guys, if you want to ask me anything about what I'm saying right now, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I am live there from Monday to Friday, every day, three hours from 4 Easter time, all the way to 7 Easter time. So if you catch me live, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Now, step four, it's about OBS Studio or OBS Live. I think that if you get OBS Studio, you really should get OBS Live. Why? Because I'm a really good fan and I actually use that on my stream. The Stream Elements Overlay Creator basically gets all of your overlays into Stream Elements, into stream elements web source. I just have three sources on my scenes because my computer is really bad and maybe yours is too. Maybe it's not, but you always will want to have a lower CPU impact from your broadcasting software. And I, I'm pretty sure OBS uses way less than Streamlabs OBS. And even if you add the OBS live blogging, I think it's called, it's from Stream Elements and it has your chat, it has your activity feed, and it adds a ton new features to OBS. One of the other pros of using OBS Studio is that you can add plugins. You can do all kinds of tweaks to make your stream the way you want. Trust me, there's a ton of tutorials, there's a ton of things. If you wanna know more about um, plugins in OBS, please be sure to check out Nutty. I will leave his um, YouTube link down in the description. And yeah, basically, OBS, uh, it's less simple than Streamlabs in my opinion. I just didn't see any tutorials when transitioning. I just didn't have Gael level to teach me how to use OBS <laughs> Studio, but I had a great time just transitioning from Streamlabs to OBS because I knew most of the things. The only hard part was dealing with the alerts since I was based on Streamlabs alerts and I had to migrate all those alerts over to OBS Live. But in OBS Live, you have way more control of that. And that's why I think that if you're really experienced in Streamlabs already and you want that change, you want that open world of possibilities, go ahead and change and use OBS Live. Not OBS Studio, just use OBS Live. There's really not that much difference. It is even better. I see no way why a streamer should decide to use OBS Studio rather than OBS Live. And let's go to our final step. Well, we've come to this part of the video, um, basically the end of it. I just decided to add this fifth step to make a couple cl things clear out of all of the past four steps. First, remember you have all those four. Maybe you find a new one that you like, maybe in the next year or so, they come out with a new uh, broadcasting software. Uh, that happened when I was uh, just starting with uh, Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs OBS was just new when I started and it was still so simple to use. So yeah, be sure to keep an eye on what you actually need. Be sure to keep an eye on what you actually want. And please, please research, please research. Don't think that you're alone on this um, Twitch uh, trip. You are with me, you have me, you have a bunch of other stream doctors, you have a bunch of other people that know about this. Just remember that you're not alone. If you have any questions, ask them. That's the only way you can understand things. Also, if you don't understand any term I'm using, be sure to check it out. Trust me, I'm saying things that I learned. I learned things from other people. And if you're learning this from me right now, 
and you don't understand, you can ask me more things. You can ask the people that taught me those things. You can ask them also. There's a ton of help on this platform and I'm sure you will find your broadcasting software. It's just trial and error. And as always, I will wish you guys a happy stream. I love you guys and I'll see you back on our next streamer tips video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh.